Hi, uh, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor, fan of lots of things, um, many of them Japanese music related, but today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, uh, before I get to that, uh, I'll include in the link below a place where you can um, check out my Patreon page and you can look for my new book, which by the time this goes live should be available for pre-order. It's called Burning Shakespeare. It's a light-hearted, playful, uh, time travel -y fantasy kind of adventure. If you like Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman, um, this should uh, uh, appeal to you. It's about a guy who sells his soul to go back in time and wipe the works of Shakespeare from history. So it's a fun little romp. Now today what I'm going to do, totally different, uh, as you, uh, I'm sure some of you know, uh, for a number of years now I have been working with Tom DeLong of X Blink-182, uh, Angels and Airwaves, Boxcar Racer, um, and uh, he and I have been working together on um, a series of books, a um, couple of series, Cathedrals of Glass and Secret Machines books. And for various reasons, lately I've been thinking a lot about creativity and uh, how we find what we are going to produce as artists and how we find the energy and the drive to continue to produce um, in, in difficult times. So I thought I would ask Tom what he thought. So um, here it is. I hope you like it. Thanks. So what's going on? Uh, so Talk well, to me. So, okay. So, uh, so the last couple of years have been sort of strange for, for a lot of artists, right? Um, and a lot of writers that I know have been sort of, you know, rethinking what they do and try to figure out how to make good product, you know, and keep themselves active. And, and I, I've been thinking a lot about this a lot. And I found myself, and I was thinking about you because, you know, you've been an artist, a rock star, an entertainer, your entire adult life, which is really strange when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, I mean, um, obviously I've, I've watched you for years the, and, and the way that you have sort of evolved as a musician, a songwriter, you know, both within Blink and then into Boxcar Racer and Angels and Airwaves and stuff. And you, you seem to be sort of constantly evolving and, uh, and now, of course, into books and movies and TV shows and stuff. So I, I thought it might be interesting to just talk about, you know, what drives you, where impulses for ideas start, um, and uh, how you, you have evolved as a creator over the years, and where you're going. Yeah, that's a good question. What if I don't know the answer to any of that? It's that's really okay. <laughs> I mean, we can just talk till we sort of stumble on, on yeah. flashes of genius. <laughs> well, genius is a broad stroke. Uh, but I will say, like, you know, it starts with um, a bit of rebellion against the way you you grew up, you know, which all of us probably have to some degree. It's like, my parents are crazy. I, I wish they would have done it this way. Or all my friends had perfect households and mine was boring and weird. Um, but I think you got to have that rebellion to be better than the life that you had. And for me, I had a pretty rough life. You know, I grew up on a lot of tough kids and uh, grew up, um, I got kicked out of school, a lot of abuse in my family. You know, I was chasing around with a belt, you know, and I, can you imagine hitting kids now, you go to prison, you know, but back then it's like the dean of the school had a paddle. When I was in like third grade, it's like, well, who the fuck is this guy that gets to hit me? You know, like, you know, I'm pretty sure my mom will kill you but only because she wants to be the one hitting me <laughs> i don't know like it's just um funny but you know you kind of get out of uh home life and and what i found is i i felt better when i expressed myself i felt an identity i felt a drive and so that was like the only good thing in my life you know so i stuck to that and by sheer luck and obsession and not wanting to fall back into a life that i had <laughs> you know um, I, I took every little piece of success that I might have got. Sometimes it was one person at a show that said something cool, but you hold on to that and you use it as fuel. Um, and then you, you know, I think for me, the biggest change though, honestly, like to have a career in the arts, 
you know, you got to be fearless. Like mm. I remember with Blink, I felt lucky. Like, being good is a subjective thing. It's like, you know, we like their music. We don't like their music. So you can't really hold on to this idea that you're good, you know, because to me, there's always so many people that probably hate you for no reason at all. So it's like, you can't sit there and kind of go, but I'm so good at what I do because I sold some records. We all see like the one giant song come and then we never hear that band again or a giant movie and never see that actor again. You know, so I was very hyper aware that that we have to continuously, um, you know, try to progress as an artist. And what that means for me was always like, how do I understand what people don't like about me and weed out the ones that I go, oh, I don't give a fuck about, you know, they hate the fact that I wear hats. Okay, who cares about that? You know, but if someone else says all their songs sound the same, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's like for me is like okay why do you why does that sound that way to you is it a punk rock thing is it a like you you listen to hip-hop so of course you know or do you listen to really cool music and you like a little bit of everything and you feel that way about us and so then i kind of go okay how if that's something that i feel then then my version of progressing in that instance would be like well let me study something that has the same attributes as my art that i can that i haven't really learned a lot about so i grew up with southern california punk rock music but have I really dove into the who, you know, have I really listened mm -hmm. to like what they do and how they did it? And I, I, I know the hit songs, but, you know, have I really done a deep dive on the police, you know, like that kind of thing. And, um, and so that way, you know, it, it forces me to learn from others in a way that's consistent with the art that I want to do, but it's also progressing and hitting people that don't like what I do, but learning from that. Um, and being fearless about it. But then there's one caveat here. Like the only way art works, period, in my opinion, and I think this is true throughout the whole time, I could think, is that if you're not passionate about your art, if you're chasing money, mm -hmm. if you're chasing what's popular, it, it's not going to be good. Now you can, so, so I think there's like a, there's a, there's something here that I think is actually kind of important. Like, a lot of times you might be passionate about like, hey, I really want to play punk rock music. And then all of a sudden, like um, electronic music gets super popular. So then I'm kind of going, oh, my God, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I got to like, you know, I got to turn my band to do this and come out with an electronic song. And you hear that all the time. Yeah. And you're going, what are they doing? And, you know, it's like, I mean, we saw that, you know, when Limp Bizkit, you know, back in the like 2000s was like big and all over mtv blink was at the same time but i remember metallica mm -hmm. was for a minute chasing <laughs> the sound like Limp and we're going metallica like what are you doing you know like why would you why would you ever like l lower yourselves <laughs> to something like that you know like when you guys are like you know you guys are good you know and um so I think what's more important is like when you want to stay modern and you want to be progressive in, in something else is happening and your art feels antiquated, it's not to change. It's mm. to find what you like about that and see how it can like influence you versus just doing it. So, so it's you, much better. Yeah, go ahead. But you, you, you make it sound like this is quite sort of conscious and deliberate and, and intellectual. Is it like a an actual choice you sit down and you figure it out or is it just something you absorb organically and you evolve you know, i have always been a huge fan of not reinventing the wheel but coming out with like a much sexier wheel a streamlined <laughs> wheel like you know it's kind of like hey we Next got this wheel. like yeah we got this really cool long cable and it has electricity that goes through it and then later on someone's like uh what if the cable was like made out of glass like a fiber optic cable so still a cable, but it's just kind of a lot better, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's kind of how I've always do it. So I do this kind of um, a very rational kind of approach. Like you said, like it's kind of like I'm, I'm decoding things. I, but for me, it's almost like, how do I not just put out the electronic song, but how do I add electronics to what I'm doing? And does that feel like it still hits my passion and my, is it authentic is, or my, because you got to, the first person that should notice if your art is chasing something, is you mm. if you don't know that then then that's a taste issue and you should figure it out quick you know in my opinion mm -hmm. and i try really hard to make sure i'm not abandoning on anything that i do who i am as a person mm. and even on secret machines like the stuff you and i worked on together um 
you know, it's funny. It's like, where's the dick jokes? Where's the skateboarders and stuff, you know? But it's still, it's, as you, as anyone knows me as you do, it's like Chick Machines is very me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't mind taking a left turn in my career with something like that because I I feel it in my bones. Yeah. Um, but if but if it's like, you know, if if Dune came out and it's super popular, am I going to go try to put out a movie right now that's like essentially the exact same thing, except it's not a desert planet, it's a water planet? And they're mining the oceans or something, you know, whatever. Like, you want copy <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah. But you might want, you might look at it and kind of go, but what's cool about it is that it's a complex story about, you know, in different cultures interacting with each other over a resource that really makes you choose morality over commerce. You know, it's like you can mm -hmm. find something in there that goes out. That's a, that's a storyline that has attributes that can really work well. And then I would sit there and go, and how do I apply it to a, a skateboarder and punk rock and dick jokes? You know, how do I make it epic? <laughs> Um, no, so you, 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 I mean, obviously, you know, over the last, how long have we been doing this? Seven years, eight years or something? Who's counting, AJ? Who's counting? <laughs> Some of the readers are counting. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> they are. Um, you, you obviously have a very sort of both a, vi a visual sensibility and a narrative sensibility. So it, sometimes it, it seems to me like it's almost surprising to me that you got your start as a musician. Do you, do you think when you're writing songs, do you think in terms of story? Do you think in terms of images? I think in terms of images, like I, I write a lot of songs in my head, like, which is weird. Cause I, uh, um, all the riffs and all the different elements, I can picture them as those Tetris blocks, you know? And, and the basic way of describing that is like, you know, um, if you have a bass guitar, it's like this low shape. And then you have a guitar thing. That's like a higher pitch shape. The vocals might fit here as long as those things aren't in the way. So you carve out the middle, then you add some sprinkly things up here. And I can picture those Tetris blocks and go, okay, that's a song, you know. Um, but Does that shape like come before the lyric, before the cotton, before? Oh, the, yeah. 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 And it's not until I get moved by the emotion of the music, then I kind of go, okay. So then I moved to vowel sounds, which is still huh. shapes, shapes that fit. Yeah. And then I moved to a couple words. And then if I like, that then I go in that direction to see what the universe is telling me to say you know but really what I've learned was it's weird but I do the same thing with all these stories and the films we're doing it's like I'm not like I'll never have a skill set like you like in the sense where you can get down and and really hone in on really tiny things about a character and their environment like that is not me I'm very much Jackson Pollock you know where you just like throw something <laughs> like, that's cool you know like <laughs> Um, but I have a good, I have a good, I have a good, uh, I, th I think I have a good skill set for feeling like um, the entertainment value in something as far as like that I think is, I feel very confident. I think it's really cool and really interesting and has its own shape and color. And so I really love doing that with people like yourself where you hold the, the skill set where you can get down and write the novel. But I love kind of blurring my eyes, stepping back with you and kind of going, how where's the ups and downs the peaks the valleys where's the twist um and yeah. then i look at like you know our big set pieces and go you know this is in the mountains and this one's up in the sky and this one's in a city and i kind of go whoa this is cool we have scope we have it's interesting we have twists we have so i'm really good at that upper level which is more of a producerial role yeah um you know uh and that applies really well for film you know it's 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 uh it's really a lot for me to get down and do so much typing you know like I worked on the Monsters of California script for quite a long time and um, I'm working on another one right now that I'm writing and it's um it's a lot for a guy like me to sit down and and really hone in especially on scripts as you know they're so technical yeah. so everything that's in your head can't be said driven yeah yeah it's so yeah. weird it's like there's so much in my head about this character but none of it applies in a script it's like well when he was a kid something happened to him and he's pissed you know well you don't put that in there <laughs> it doesn't matter you know unless you want to show it somehow or i'm well no i just need people to know it because i don't want to spend time on it well they don't know it you know so right. that kind of technicality is i always find fascinating how it's different from writing a book but it seems like that sort of very sort of macro that thirty thousand foot view <laughs> and then building it in bits is actually quite similar to what you were doing as a musician so so the, the overall creative 
impulse is actually quite similar, but you, you're working in radically different genres. Is that, is that true? Is that fair? It's, it's totally true. And I, it's kind of like, it, I, I really believe a good artist can find their, their way on any medium, you know, on, um, for me, it's like music. A lot of what I got into with angels and airwaves, cause we started dabbling with it a little bit on blink was like being able to create some type of, um, dramatic, intro on a song you know the way a song starts the way it builds the way huge guitars come in and out and the lights flash and then everything mm -hmm. hits and it's a crescendo that's no different than a movie it's like your opening scene of a movie is the same thing it's mm -hmm. how do you catch someone off guard what is poking at their ear you yeah. know in a movie it's like what's poking at their in their eyes and their ears and 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 you just slowly piece bring them in and um although it's a lot more complex expensive and technical but it really is the same thing like that's more like but so is recording a song i mean i spent three years on this last angels record like off and on for three years and it's so tedious to do it at that level like at that level meaning the caring that much about the song versus ah it's a cool song move on to the next one yeah we've got a couple hits on the last angels record i was like i really care i want every song to be as good as it can be and that was a different thing but um it's really tedious too. Everything's tedious. I was going to say that movies are that much. It's just a lot more people and a lot more different types of things working together. Like music, it's like a song in your band, but movies, obviously, as you know, you got the writing and you got the you got the acting and you got the lighting and you got what your hardware is on cameras and you got editing and post VFX score. You know, then you got Foley because <laughs> you don't have anyone breathing or walking on the floor. You got, I mean, it's just like the amount of things is really technical and more yeah. of a longer process. But I. But at the end of the day, it's all tedious. I always tell anybody, it's like, you got to love what you do enough to suffer the grind because everything has a grind. Even film, writing books. It's like, I want to be an author. Well, do you want to sit down and write 700 pages twice? <laughs> like you <Yeah>. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think, I mean, when you were talking about the difference between the angel sound and, and a lot of blink sound, you know, it has that sort of that epic kind of... Uh, Scope and the word that keeps coming to mind to me is a sort of ambition. Do you think you've become more ambitious as an artist? And I don't mean, you know, for fame or money. I mean, in terms of the scale yeah. of what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that separates me, there's two things that I can point like three. There's three things. That's my secret sauce. The first thing is having just a dash of success. Like having a dash of success shows you that you're capable of it you know everyone's capable but a lot of people are too insecure to try or they don't even know what success feels like so they don't even know what to aim for mm -hmm. you know because i i can write a lot of different types of songs but i'm thinking about what's going to resonate i'm thinking about my best foot forward i'm thinking about how i how you know what's the most exciting noise to hear when a song starts and what would that look like with lights like so i'm thinking through a lot of things because i want to just i can just sit down and write a song on acoustic or I could put that song on electric, have a start with some synthesizers and there's stadium chanting and there's like, oh, that's different, you know? Mm. Um, but I, I like both songs, but one serves a greater purpose. So, but if you, as long as you have a little dash of success, you start to realize that you're capable of it. And I think the second thing that, that made me more ambitious was then I had success. And I was like, oh my God, what if I really apply myself rather than doing just what everyone else is doing, just thinking I'm limited? Because a lot of time in the beginning of Blink, I always felt like I was limited. This is what we do. We fucking, we're not that good. You know, and we make fun of ourselves, you know. But then we started trying a little bit and we kind of were really fucking pretty good, you know. Mm -hmm. And then um, and I think like for me, it was like dude, this is the second thing. When I left Blink, I went through years of like full identity crisis. Like, here's the guy, one of the biggest bands in the world, in parking and reservations at restaurants and five star hotels. And I went to like people don't remember me. I don't get the reservation. I'm staying at a Holiday Inn now on tour, <laughs> you know, um, and it's like, <laughs> that was like hard for me. I was young. I was like in my late 20s. Um, but it's a lot when you're at that age to think that like, because you are thinking, oh, I'm going to make something of myself and I'm going to do it and like, you know, fuck them. But it doesn't work that way. You know, it's a lot of the loss of ego. But once I lost that ego, it was really awesome because then I didn't really care what people thought because no one really was thinking anything. <laughs> so what did I have to lose? Right. So it caused me to be totally fearless. Like, well, if they think they don't like what I do or they thought all I did was that, so they're not following what I do, whatever the reasons are that no one's paying attention, I'm going to slowly and incrementally gain their attention through the quality of my work. 
Mm. And that's what I was saying. Like it's the, the first thing is tasting success. And the second thing is, is really being fearless about what you want. And if it means losing the adoration of everybody around you, just so you can do that, then do it, you know, or if you're good enough when you're famous, to not care what anyone thinks. We've seen those artists. They don't care. You know, it's like Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam isn't trying to impress people. He's not out there trying to be on the cover of like the big pop magazines and shit. Like mm -hmm. the only time you see him speak is if he's talking about a cause that's important to his heart. And I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a Pearl Jam fan, but I'm not like a big Pearl Jam fan by name. I'm not into the jam kind of stuff, but those guys are awesome and they're super smart and they're fucking good. And their shows are way gnarlier than I, than I ever thought they would be um, in the sense of aggressive and just punk and cool. I was like, gee, who are these guys? They caught me off guard for you guys, but, but they do what they want and they're not trying to dazzle it up, you know? So I think, again, taste success, lose the ego and be fearless. And I think the third thing is, is you have to be in a good place in your life. Because when I was like in my last marriage and we weren't really getting along and that marriage was coming to an end, there's no way you can channel from the divine and create art in real time. It's just like you have so many blocks because your emotions are firing all day long, baggage and anger and, and just like victimhood, you know, me, me, and just whatever. How do you find the emotional clearing in your head to like, to tune into the frequencies you need so you know imagine having a huge fight with your wife and then you go up to your writing room and you're supposed to write the best chapter ever it just doesn't happen right so you gotta you gotta be in a good space in your life to succeed you yeah. know so yeah. those are the three things i would i would and i i just i was kind of thinking of that in real time so that's a long answer but i hope that makes sense yeah. yeah no totally i was thinking you know um you know when some people go on stage it's like they become somebody different there's a, there's a persona just in terms of what you were just saying about, you know, what's going on in your personal life and stuff like that is, is performing live for you like that? Or do you still feel like you're, you're tired? Um, I'm very much me now the, for a while I wasn't. So when angels first started, I remember being just so angry and just so upset that I remember that I wanted to be taken seriously as an artist. So I go so mm -hmm. far to one side. And I wasn't totally myself because of rebelling against what I think people thought of me and wanted me to be, you're the funny guy, or dick jokes, run around, do whatever. Ma, no, I'm, I'm a serious artist, you know? But then I just, now when I look back, I go, whoa, is that guy insecure? Whoa, is that guy not know who he was? Whoa, was he searching? It was funny. Then we did all the secret machine stuff. And again, people thought I was totally nuts, got involved with all these government people. And then when that started coming out, like the enormous credibility that came where, wait, is he not crazy? Wait, maybe he's not the dumb one, you know? And um, so then I felt like, I felt really good about myself because I did something and started something that I really think is going to change the world and it already is, you know? And, and that um, gave me like a tremendous, like confidence in my soul that if people don't understand my reasons for leaving the band in the first place and they don't understand my reasons for getting into like weird UFO shit, or understand my reasons of working with the government. And then, but now there are, they're starting to understand that I do what I want. I follow what I believe in. And I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I'm pretty savvy, you know? And even though I say crazy things and I fuck around a lot, but um, so that little confidence, which is, it's not that I'm trying to be like, okay, now all of a sudden I care about what people think of me. It just kind of came on its own. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, is when I went back into the angels and airwaves on stage, for the first time, but not this one, we just, even the one, the one we just did too, but it got, it was really bad, like a couple of years ago when I did our first tour, a year and a half ago, whatever. Um, I went back to become the more complete version of myself. I wasn't Mr. Serious guy on stage. I was like kind of half and half and a lot of dick jokes and a lot of stupid shit. And I, was, I remember feeling like this is me. Yeah. This is why I work with AJ on a book called Secret Machines. But this is also why I'm on stage and saying funny jokes about the first time I tried to kiss a girl and it went horribly wrong or something, you know? And right. um, so I, I, I felt like, I finally feel like me again on stage. I didn't for the longest time for those reasons, you know? Yeah. Some bands are different though. They get up there and they're like, they become maniacs. Mm. Like they, they, the power and that energy makes them feel so full, it's so narcissistic. And like, <laughs> and I play to them all the time. Like they get up there and they're, ah, and they drink and they're chanting and they're like, me, 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 me. We the fuck burn the place down. <laughs> and then like everyone breaks everything and then the crowds leave and the cops are there and that guy's there like sweeping up <laughs> after the show. I'm sorry, I don't know what I said. You know, I've seen, <laughs> I've been that guy. Yeah. One time I had to stay after because I told all the kids, like thousands of kids to throw snowballs and shit. 
well, they threw him at the stage. And so I felt so bad because we we're on the warp tour and I knew everyone there. I was like sweeping up everything afterwards. And it, like, it wasn't very full, it wasn't very punk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. That's great. Do, do you think you're, you're, well, do you think there's any part of the sort of musical world that you would happily walk away from? Or do you think you will always be a singer, a songwriter, and a performer? Is that, you know, when, when I announced that I was, I, I said uh, on Twitter, I'm going to do an interview with Tom. And a couple of people said, well, you know, you're going to talk about aliens? And I said, well, we're going to talk about being creative. And they're like, well, we just want you to talk about aliens. And I thought, <laughs> is that, I wondered, what, what do you think about that? Is that, I mean, do you feel like well, the art is, is inseparable from the other stuff? Is it, you know, it's funny when I, when I, I just literally two years ago, which was, a, it was like a six year period. I was done. I, I wasn't playing music at all. I was starting the company. I was like, I was making music and putting it out, but not tracking it to be anything. It was just like, I just, I, I literally, when I fell in love with my wife now, like I remember like four years ago, I was like, I don't think I'll ever play again. It's not, a, that's not something I'm involved in this and whatever. And I was always thinking if there's one thing that would get me out of like wanting to play music, um, it was the UFO thing because that's just like massive. And that's like a lifelong pursuit of mine to try to understand it and teach people about it. And then all of a sudden I found myself in the proverbial like captain's chair of it, you know, and things get scary and things get nerve wracking and things get weird. And there's a whole story that people don't know that led up to where I'm at and, and some scary stuff, frightening, weird, unnerving things. And, and, and even the government like stuff is so serious. So then you end up, I found myself in the state of con what I say and what I'm involved in getting in trouble, you know, people from Russia that are trying to hack our shit, spies from Russia showing up at our, our events and like um, people telling me I need to be careful and not get in people's cars and shit. And like, like important people saying that to me, you know, like, so then I kind of go, what am I really good at? And where am I best used in this situation um, with this subject? And kind of found is after we got it all to come out and I made my first movie, I kind of realized, I think I'm pretty fucking good at the storytelling around this stuff. And that's where I should do it. Like I shouldn't be focusing on being over in DC and meeting people anymore. Like that, that stuff's doing it, its job. I don't hold any weight over there anyways. Um, and so when you ask me like do you ever see yourself not playing music there's a period of time where i really thought i wouldn't and there's a period of time where i got so into all the government type stuff with my team that i thought that's where i was going to be am i gonna be wearing a suit going to meetings at the pentagon someday or some shit like mm -hmm. i'm so happy i'm not um but for a while you know yeah it's like it's almost like your first record's going platinum you're i got these goggles on they're just this big you're whoa what's going on where am i how did i end up here but really when you're there for a while this isn't what i want to do it's not it doesn't move people emotionally. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, that's where I seem to fit best is if I'm creating something that can hit someone's heartstrings a little bit. And, um, and so I don't, so with the, that's, an, I, I'm th I think out loud when you ask these questions for the first time, no one's really asked me that. There's a period <laughs> of time where I thought I, I would not play music. And then I got, I, you know, it's crazy. I did, a, um, so, you know, Hal Pudoff, our partner at Two Stars created the, psychic spy program so i know a lot about the remote viewing stuff that he does you know, these guys meditating in the cia and getting access to information it like really works it's not some weird power that they have it's just consciousness and it's just how consciousness works and you can basically do it, these things to make it work and get really good at it and train those muscles but i got into some of that um and i knew some of that so i started doing these meditations and stuff um and what i found was is i can reach those moments where i'm getting information but not all the time it can't be for an ego-driven purpose. You can't be like, I really want money and I want to be a famous rock star. Tell me how. It's not going to work. Um, or it might work, but it'll be dark. It'll like make you like, you got to be on cocaine and you got to, you know, who knows what it'll say. I don't know. Um, but you got, I also found that when I'm being really honest and really like um, genuinely like open heart, like, I don't know what to do. It's what people get in those religious states where they just ask God, you're at your lowest point, just pray and ask God. It's exactly the same thing. It's just meditate and ask divine. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just how we're how we're built. And that, they figured that out the CIA and they they 
weaponized it to a degree or something. I don't know. But um, so so I, it, I started getting good at this. But it only happened like three out of 10 times, you know, where I can get into a deep enough thing. But I remember one of the few times when I got into this meditation, I asked questions and I was asking like what I should do with my career. I was like, okay, I just got out of this divorce. I really need my family to heal. My kids are a mess. Um, this is really, really difficult. I'm like, I'm, I've been alone for like a year with this new rental, just didn't even know how to get back on my feet. And, um, and I go, what do I do for my career? What am I supposed to do with to the stars and with, you know, music and why, I mean, where do I go? I'm, I'm, I don't even know, you know? And I remember it showed me the way it worked with me is I'd get an image in my head because my eyes are closed. My heart's like barely beating. And if you're super, super calm and you're not listening to anything, I get an image and you focus on it, let that image morph. Don't define it because you might see something yellow. Oh, fire hydrant. It's all, no, it's a school bus, motherfucker. Like, let it alone. Leave that image. And let it. So I'm watching this image and it showed me a musical note like a note you would see on the page. And I was just staring at all, what's, what's this? And then instantly I get this voice in my head. It, it's a sentence and it says, um, uh, go back and play music and all else will follow. That's all it said. It didn't tell me which, like what to do. <laughs> it's just like, you have to play music. And I really trusted that because it's a visceral thing when this happens. <clears throat> now it doesn't happen all the time. I try to do that. I'm trying to go, what do I do? And it might show you like a bird and then nothing but like but this like i've had like four of these moments where it literally seemed like someone was beaming a voice into my head but it takes a lot to get there but it's so real it's crazy it it's just i just wish i wish i knew how to operate from that kind of frequency all the time and that's what they say like monks can walk around in that meditative state so they're just channeling a, a big huge bandwidth fiber optic cable you know with their with their mind and their soul um and we're all operating on like dial up <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's yeah interesting i mean when you first said to the to the people around you the people you work with uh, you know i, I want to do some books people must have thought you'd lost your mind oh yeah because i didn't know how to i get all excited and i say stupid shit i don't really read about what i said i'll put up 15 books well, we did, but it sounds retarded to, to like say that, like, oh, you know, like I'm going to sit down. I didn't, you know, so I get people, everything I've done, people think I'm crazy. I'm starting to think it's kind of funny. And, you know, at this point, um, but yeah, because even to me, like a novel is like it's scary. Like that's not, I'm not an author like you, you know, like I have an idea of what could be cool and how it could work in the way I feel things, but I still didn't. It's not like Secret Machines was all in my head. You know, we spent six months planning out yeah. just what it is. And and you came up with the architecture based off our conversations. And I, it's just fucking brilliant. You know, just the way the chapters work and all that kind of stuff. And um, so it's so, yeah, like people thought I was nuts and I and I was, but I was fearless and I believed in it and it was authentic. So mm -hmm. I will do it. You know, I jump all the way in. I. I don't just dip my toe in the bath. I'm like head first, you know, even if it's yeah. two feet deep. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, do you, are you, are you afraid of stagnation? Yeah. Isn't that fucking purgatory for an artist? Yeah. Imagine if all you can imagine if every day you just stare at your fucking keyboard, but you don't actually type on it, you know, but you have all these things in your head. The idea of not being able to create is a real scary thing for me. Or, um, or to have to keep creating the same thing can't do that like that was a problem with blink back in the day where i had a huge fear of like if i just play the same songs every night people are only celebrating what i did mm -hmm. which then in effect makes me feel like i have nothing to offer so then mm -hmm. i'm just kind of a monkey up here dancing playing the same song so i have to be in a situation where i feel super creative and i can apply myself that's really all i care about i don't care about the fame and the money part i mean obviously i want to have like a nice house or i want to be able to go on vacation that'd be awesome i'll work hard enough to like live comfortably but you know, I'm not going to work hard enough to be a billionaire. You know, I'm not going to work hard enough so I can have people cheering at me every night. It's a rush. But honestly, like I listen, if I do some, a piece of art that I'm proud of, I'm watching it or listening to it on my own late at night where I might get a tear in my eye and I'm smoking pot or something. And I'm like, this is rad. I did this. Are you kidding me? I was a part of this. You know, that's the extent of why I do things because mm -hmm. then I feel it the way.
someone else could potentially feel it. And that's what really gets me excited. Yeah. So you don't necessarily feel the pressure of the fan base or whatever pushing you towards certain kind of things and away from other kinds of things. I see it and I understand it, um, but it doesn't change it because I've really gotten through like after like the breakup of the band back in the day and the breakup of my last marriage and stuff, you know, I've got those like scar tissue from life experience. Mm. Um, I'd like to be a really good grandfather right now. You know, I'd be a really good grandpa. I would be like, I know everything. I'm going to tell you how it was, course, you know? So I just know at this point, it's a, it's a really visceral knowing that happiness has nothing to do with fame or money. Happiness has nothing to do with what people expect of you or how much you can wow them with what your capabilities. Happiness has to do with you creating something that affects other people in a positive way. And that could be a coffee shop. It could be just a book club on your street, uh, or it could be a movie or a book, a song. Um, it could be a friendship. You know, it's wherever you, you're creating. What people don't understand, what's really interesting, because I, I just got into all this stuff because I had to write this voiceover for my first film, Monsters of California. And it's kind of like something that, that sums up like the movie, but it's dealing with all this paranormal stuff and consciousness. But what's interesting is on a quantum level, like everything in time is happening at the exact same moment, past, present, future. So what we see is physical reality. Like look out your door and you see your street and the trees and other houses. But imagine if you kind of like just turn your head and it goes and you see that same location, but it's 1940. Turn it again, it's 1700. Turn it again, it's the year 3000. But it's the same place. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of look through every timeline. That's all happening at the same moment. And what you end up actually seeing is all you believe is possible. That's not how it works. What, what they said is your brain is a transducer. So you're literally taking waves of potential, low frequencies, high frequencies, and you project them at the quantum level, the instant that you look at something and think about it, and then it imprints it on a universal kind of hard drive that somebody else can now go to the location and see the same tree that you put there. Hmm. So they're like, well, does a tree make a sound in the forest when it falls? No, it's not even there until a human is there to put it there. It's wild. So now they're going, oh my God. So if consciousness is literally the, 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 the energy that, that, that is everywhere, that's omnipotent the way we say God is, <laughs> omnipotent the way we say God is, it's what powers the atom. It's a sea of energy that powers the individual atom that you're telling me that we can tap into that sea and our brain just pulls that fuel and we can project like war, a dictator, an abuser, love, happiness, a child, a tree. It's, and so then they did all these experiments called the double slit experiment where they're shooting photons through one of two slits, like on a plate. It's mm -hmm. one individual photon. They were like, it's only going through the slit that we observe. Like the scientists, if they were looking at the left slit, the photon goes to that one or the right one, but it was literally only to do with their mind. And on the plate that it would get collected on, it was dotting the plate, each one dot, dot, dot. It was a wave, waves of probability. It's all these crazy energy waves that only your brain can tune into. So when you tune into like, like you know, a burrito, <laughs> it's like, like, uh, like a, it's, it's, you're literally thinking and tuning into and getting rid of all the other staticky waves around it and getting a hi-fi signal to something you're imagining from the past or whatever you think you're just imagine it and then you if you knew you could actually materialize the burrito in your hand but we don't know how to do that but then a kid does it like kids like edgar Allan mitchell i think i told you this a long time ago when he went to the moon he came back and he was just like something about consciousness is a big deal and he had this epiphany so he started this um the this institute called uh, the the institute of noetic sciences or something it's all about consciousness so edgar Allan mitchell a phd apollo astronaut gets all these other phds and one of the first things they studied was uri geller was around tv the psychic bending spoons and his fingers yeah. melting spoons they're going around they kind of find out is he lying is he not we can't actually tell because we know he's lying here looks like he's really doing it here so we don't really fucking know but what we do know is when we go around all the houses of kids watching this dude on Johnny Carson, they don't know he's lying. So the kids are really doing it. They're, I don't know, look, he can do it, I can do it. Because no one told the kids it's not possible. 
that has to do with faith and belief and manifestation. Well, everyone know, how do you manifest a good life? That sounds weird. It's new agey. No, it's actually physics. It's literally actually physics that on the very fundamental basic quantum level, the only way for a physical matter to exist is for a human to transduce the waves into physical matter. And if you don't, someone else will do it for you and then you're kind of fucked, <laughs> you know, and then you live in a world that you can't mesh with, you know? Mm. So we are literally creating reality and everything is happening everywhere all at once. So if you think of your brain as this little antenna, you can literally tune into your own life experience, but there's cause and effect and all these different natural forces. So if you want to be a rock star and that's all you tune in, maybe you'll get there overnight, but you'll be on drugs and you'll hurt people and you'll have a crash because at the end of the day, it's about your soul learning lessons and getting better and consciousness expanding because all of us are having lessons. But it's just a really fascinating way to think about life. And this is like the latest stuff with neuroscience and physics and quantum physics. And UFOs kind of sit at the nexus of all of that. That's how I got into this stuff. Because I was always like, I wonder about the machines and who are the pilots? But really what you learn is these machines aren't coming from other planets. They're coming from time. You know, and then you go, why? Well, maybe we have a consciousness they don't have. So they can't like meditate and kind of cruise through all things at once. They have to use a machine to do it, you know? So it gets really crazy quick, but I find that fascinating. So, um, I mean, obviously you want to talk about stuff like this through your art. Has it changed the way you approach art and, and creativity in general? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of tend to think that like whatever I do now, outside of like a simple song that I just like, it has to have something that betters the world, in my view, directly or indirectly. So even if we did a movie that's like sci-fi and super fun and not connected to UFOs or not connected to anything that I can directly say like, whoa, you know, like <laughs> it's just more like there's something in it that's teaching you about yourself, even if it's my mom used to say like you scratch your nose you reach around your head to scratch your nose you know it's like without people knowing you go around the back door and <laughs> then they learn something i want to the stars to stand for um credible concepts that are explained to people in a way that's like you know galvanizing and enlightening and thrilling you know and, and when you say credible concepts you mean that sort of emotionally as well as like in terms of physics or Sci politics? yeah science like informed science fiction it's like mm -hmm. it's you know, I was always a fan of like Jurassic Park because it's like, oh, they could probably do that. <laughs> you know, fucking around with DNA, who knows, you know? But then you watch something like Independence Day and it's just dumb. You know, well, what's the difference? If someone took some time, you know, and, and they mixed like good information with like a really good artist, Spielberg or something, mm -hmm. you know? And I really want us to try to follow in that path mm -hmm. where we can show people a future um, that's possible. Um, even if it's bumpy, you know. Mm -hmm. where, where do you think you're going? Uh, I mean, or where, where do you think the music industry is going? Where do you think your own, where will you be five, ten years from now? Well, I'm, everyone asks me if I'm going to space. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Until we have an electro-gravitic magnetic engine, I don't know if I'm going to launch into space like these other dudes, so I won't be there. Okay. But I think, like, where my goal is um, with To The Stars is very <laughs> simple, um, is that we will have all the resources in the world to do to make these gigantic works of art that people will learn from and can help bring people up to speed as to who we are and why we're here and where we're going and all that kind of stuff but also within that institution for the first time have the capital and resources to follow and study all of these paranormal things that are indirectly or directly tied to consciousness um because like what we think is a ghost or some kind of demonic gamesmanship you know that people have in their house late at night and objects are moving and they're hearing voices and, it's, and sometimes they get codes and sometimes they're following down rabbit holes their whole life spins out of, you know they're chasing something it's fucking with them and like all of that ties in together as far as what's swimming around us in time in different frequencies but also in consciousness in the sense of what we can pull from and manifest. And, and I think what we're gonna figure out is that consciousness is kind of like the missing math that plugs into like, you know, electricity and magnetism and gravity and all these things that we're like, we have these fundamental understandings of these big pieces of science 
of the sciences, but none of them connect together totally perfectly. And I kind of feel like once metaphysics and physics come together, it's going to be like, oh shit, consciousness is like the missing piece. Mm. And um, so I'm after like, getting all the best guys from the department of defense the darpas and the lockheed martins and the northrops and um raytheon and all that kind of stuff put them all at one table have their security clearances be active still um and build a system that can really understand and study all these events and deploy teams with you know for an accelerated understanding of what these things are doing how they're affecting the world but also build hardware like really expensive hardware do we get in, you know, are we, do we aim on contact? You know, do we build a neutrino accelerator down the, down the, down the road? You know, it's like, well, if I ran Warner brothers and I was worth 20, 30 billion, I would have 150 million bucks, go to a neutrino accelerator and see if we can find modulated signals with using neutrinos and talk to somebody that that's sitting in a different frequency. Don't ask me how I know that. I just guessed all that on my own, but maybe, maybe I'm really smart and just thought of that out of nowhere. I'm going to do this at some point. So my goal is like, we have a company that's actively sending out our own operations teams with government level um, scientists, engineers, and operators, custom hardware, and handling all of that for the world and then communicating it through big movies and then documentaries and novels and all that stuff. I've been out the same thing this whole time, but it wasn't until this year that I feel like we're actually like kind of there. You know, I call you up like every three months. Okay, we got to do this movie. And then all of a sudden you're like, where'd you go? I'm like, dude, shit's changing so fast. I'm so close. Just bear with me. But the past three years with COVID and everything has just been a, been a monster. It really hurt the company and everybody else's lives too. But yeah. it actually created a, a, an opportunity where now it's like, holy shit, like we're really good shape at the company for the, for the first time in years because of all the COVID stuff. So I'm really excited. So uh, we're going to be, we're going to be dropping some big old bombs this whole year. So um, can you give us any sort of teasers about what what is on the horizon or, or is that secret? Lots of stuff. We have... Um, and I, I, and uh, I have to ask you about uh, Secret Machine 3. Yeah. yeah well, that's... Uh, okay. Well, yes. Yeah, so um, we are in the mix. Uh, we have a whole bunch of things going on. Um, we have like 10 different major features that are in the works. Um, everything from, as you know, Cathedrals of Glass, Secret Machines, Poet Anderson, Monsters of California, um, a bunch of other ones that I don't think we've released titles to, all really big things. Um, and as you know, even Secret Machines uh, is a very exciting thing that I think we're going to have pretty major announcement on here pretty soon, um, probably within weeks. So, uh, and then I'm hoping... I mean, there's even a potential that Cathedrals of Glass would be, be made this fall, you know, so that's something that is very being very discussed as long as the script gets turned in on time and there's enough time to do it because I have some other things going on that I just have to schedule around. So, um, but Monsters of California will be out this year. And then, uh, and once we have some of those announcements, it's like, then we'll, we'll start planning out the book three. I have some ideas for mm -hmm. secret machines on that. We got to see kind of um we just got to wait a second to see what happens with that title as you know but um the cool thing is is like for all the people that invest into the stars and all the people that follow um what you and i did on those books but really what you did because you're the guy down there doing the hard work people are going to be very happy with what's coming with that and it's like the thing they've been waiting for you know so i'm really excited about that but that's just one of like seriously like 10 major things that are getting ready to happen with the company. So we've been waiting like four years to get to this one moment. Um, and it hasn't been easy. You know, it's never easy starting a company and then having a pandemic hit and whatever. Now there's a war. Hopefully yeah, yeah. that will be done here soon, you know? Yeah. But, um, and you were supposed yeah, to be so, on tour or about to go on tour in Europe, right? Yeah. We canceled it because of COVID. I didn't really think about because of war. Thank yeah. God that, you know, I didn't really think about that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, has that is that postponed or, or is it canceled for now? The tour? Um, we're just postponed. We haven't picked a date yet because no one knows right. like what's going on, you know. So um, I'm hoping that we put that back on the books here shortly once we realize that all the travel bans are lifted and people are all cool and healthy and whatever. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, that sounds yeah. lots of lots of interesting stuff going on. We do lots of interesting stuff, and uh, I'm really excited. Um, I'm really excited for all the things that are coming and uh 
I'm excited to work with you a lot more. Um, so that's definitely on the chopping block here to get us started right away. And uh, cool. But I think over all the fans that you've created with that book, I think people are going to be very happy. So, I, and even with cathedrals too, I mean, that, that thing's going to be fucking cool. So we're going to have more info on all that stuff here soon. Awesome. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk and, you know, on my, my humble little uh, video channel here. So I'd rather do this any day of the week than like a huge channel where I don't know the person. And they're, yeah, okay, I read your bio. You know, it's like, <laughs> sure. I know, whatever. I don't do this for the recognition. I do it to like, you know, keep, keep your eyes off money and keep your eyes off fame, keep your eyes off ad adoration and just try to do things with love in your heart you'll get to where you need to go. It's hard sometimes though, because you'll see shit happen. You're like, oh, why did that happen? Ah, that's horrible. I could have done better than that. You know, why did they make a hundred million dollar movie that's about like apples? Like <laughs> we got only one spaceships or something, but whatever. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Eyes on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. All right, man. Thank you. And that's it. Um, if this is your first time coming to my channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, and uh, oh and check out my books and uh, check out my patreon page and hopefully uh, you'll come back sometime and i'll have something else which might interest you all right cheers thanks very much till next time